I want to share a story with you. About 20 years ago, I was living overseas, and I went to a time where I felt like I was called to full-time ministry in the traditional sense, meaning I felt called to preach and minister. So I'd already graduated from SPU, as you know, but I felt like there was a program abroad that would be a great fit for me to continue to help train up that the preacher in me and the pastor in me, and kind of just train me in ways that I wasn't skilled yet in that place. And so in this time, we had a very intense schedule. We were in our program or serving the church or serving at the services, and there was five to six services every weekend, so our schedule was really, really busy. But once in a while, we would have like a full day off. So on one of our off days, I turned some, to some other international students, and I was like, let's go take in this beautiful city. Let's go enjoy the sights. So we're, you know, none of us had a car because we're international students. We jump on the public transport. We jump on the bus, and we're going, and we're just viewing these sights, and we're having just an awesome tourist day, right? And I don't know about you. I don't know if you can connect with this, but I am someone that is aware of my surroundings at all times. Do I have anyone that can relate to that? You may not know that I see you. Oh, I see you. And I know your vibe that you're bringing around. Anyone relate to that? And so I saw a situation about to have a convergence moment, and this is what it was. I'm standing up in the bus. The bus is about three quarters of the way full. Everyone's sitting down on the bus but me. I'm holding on to one of those like poles so you don't fall when they hit a quick stop. And I see this gentleman over outside on the sidewalk and I see him kind of yelling and ranting and he's talking to himself and I can tell something's not quite right. As I watched a little bit more, I realized there's some critters on board. He wasn't the only one at home. Are you tracking with me? There was some demonic activity that was taking place within this man. As I watched, I saw that there was a bus stop not too far ahead and the bus driver began to slow down and I realized in that moment we were about to have an encounter with this gentleman if I foresaw it correctly which in fact I did and so as the bus began to slow down and pull off to pick up you know the next people that were waiting at the bus stop this gentleman goes into a full sprint and runs and he's like the last person on the bus and remember the bus is about three quarters of the way full but there's two rows in the very front of the bus that are actually empty and they face forward as soon as the bus driver shut the door. This gentleman turned and he looked with the creepiest grin you've ever seen. When I saw, let me just insert this, when I saw Lord of the Rings for the first time and you saw Mr. Precious come out with the ring, I was like in the theater. I was like, that's the guy on the bus. Like, that's 100% what he looked like, like 100%. So he was Lord of the Rings precious. And he walks on the bus and he turns and has the creepiest look on his face. And all of a sudden, what went from a fun tourist day, being international students and just enjoying a beautiful city, felt like it turned into a hostage situation. And this man methodically began to go person by person, saying hateful, vile, disgusting things, pointing in people's face, going starting in the front, and working his way toward the back. And you could feel the actual tangible fear on the bus. Now, you have to remember, this is one small small man. This is Mr. Precious. He's not big, but I want you to know that when fear of a different realm comes into the room, isn't it amazing? And even psychologists would say this. When someone steps into a place of fear, the first thing to go is their voice. Did you know that? That when you're afraid, when you're taken off guard, when you find yourself in a terrifying situation, they say you psychologically go into a place where you physically lose your voice for a moment. And that is why many people have a hard time yelling for help because nothing comes out. So here we are in this situation, and you could feel, in a sense, that happened, like everyone lost their voice. They're grown men that could have easily taken this guy down. I could have taken this guy down right? But there's all these people just looking and just taking it in and just receiving, so to speak, and just allowing this guy to go person by person. And we're all just sitting there afraid, confused. And I don't know about you, but I'm looking at the bus driver and I'm like, bro, this is your domain. Like you're in charge here. You're the boss. And he just keeps looking in his rear view mirror. He just keeps looking at the situation and he's like way over his pay grade. Like he does not know what he's doing. He like just goes a little faster. Like, that's all he knows to do. He just hits the gas, right? So no one's handling the situation. It's okay if you laugh a little bit. We're in church, but it's okay. You can interact with me a little bit more. That's all right. You can, you're good. You're good. So 
here's this guy. He's just going person by person, and no one's doing anything. Have you ever waited for someone else to deal with a situation? Have you ever just been in a frightful, scary, unpredictable situation, and you're looking, you're like, why can't someone handle this? As I'm thinking that, and I hear Holy Spirit go, he just got on your bus. And all of a sudden, at 20-something years old, in this really unexpected, supposed to be fun day, I hear Holy Spirit go, you can choose faith or you can choose fear. It's your choice. And as soon as I was like, you're right, this is my bus. And why in the world are we allowing this on my bus? And as soon as I shifted, just internally, no one knew the shift but me. No one knew the conversation I was having but me and Jesus. And as soon as I made that internal shift where I shifted out of fear and I stepped into a place of faith and that authority of God within me rose up, that demonic gentleman in the midst of being in someone's face, saying hateful, vile things, instantly stood up, turned around, and came right toward me because what was in him realized what just got activated in the atmosphere. And without even thinking, without even like processing it like I'm in a public place, I need to explain what's happening, like all the things. Without even thinking, I just put my finger up And I just said, in the name of Jesus, I command that demonic spirit to shut up. That foul, vile spirit, you will not say one more word. You're going to shut your mouth. You're going to go and sit at the front of the bus. And at the next bus stop, you're going to get up and you're going to get off this bus. You know what that gentleman did? Amen. You know what that gentleman did? All of a sudden, he put his head down. He backed all the way up to the front of the bus. He turned around, he sat down, and the bus driver quickly pulled over. (laughs) Opens up the door, and the gentleman gets up and gets off the bus. And everyone on the bus just kind of looks at me. And all I know to say is, that's the power of Jesus. Jesus. 